The approach to diagnosing and treating prostate cancer has changed significantly in just the past few years. Surgery may not be the best option. Dr. Marty Wiseman is a urologist specializing in this area and I'm pleased to have him here today. Thanks for coming, Marty. Thanks for inviting me. So basically, what is the prostate and where is it? Let me show you. Okay. This structure here that is open is what we call the bladder and just below it is the prostate and um, we examine the prostate by placing a finger in the rectum and we also use that access for other things. Like biopsies? Like biopsies. So what, what is the purpose of the prostate? Well, I am asked that all the time and I have a joke to share with you. Uh, when you're younger, the prostate's purpose is to nourish the sperm. It makes most of the fluid that comes out in the ejaculate. When you get older, it nourishes the urologist. So it makes the urologist happy and the patient unhappy. Exactly. It's kind of like a, a useless organ after its purpose yes. is used. So you've been in practice for 40 years? 42 and, years. And there's been a huge revolution in, in diagnosing prostate cancer. Can you give me a little feel for what was happening early on and what happens now? When I first started in practice, uh, we didn't have a test to evaluate for the possibility of prostate cancer being present. Instead, we had patients who were in trouble. We would put a finger in the rectum and feel a rocky hard prostate. And when we took x-rays already, the cancer had spread. So normally the prostate feels nice and mushy like when you put your finger in there? Uh, we say it feels like the uh, thenar eminence, the thumb eminence of, of, the palm. of the palm. And so once it felt rocky hard, that means it was bad. If it feels like a knuckle, yeah. that is a sign of a nodule, usually cancer. And so then what happened as the, as the years went on? Uh, sometime in the later 80s, the three-legged stool of diagnosis came along, which is a combination of the PSA, which is a blood test, mm -hmm ultrasound of the prostate, which is done through the rectum, and an instrument called a spring-loaded biopsy gun came along and allowed us to diagnose prostate cancer early. What does PSA stand for? Prostate-specific antigen. So that's a simple blood test. Is there a way that it should be done? Should it be done before eating, after eating, in the morning, in the evening? Is there any recommendations for that? Generally, what we recommend, no strenuous bicycling. You can exercise otherwise. No sexual activity for a minimum of one day. Some people say two days. You shouldn't have a urinary infection. You shouldn't have a strenuous rectal exam by the doctor just before the blood test. Otherwise, that would push out some of the prostate uh, PSA yeah. into the blood and okay. raise the level. Okay, so now there's some controversy about who should get a PSA. What is your feeling and what is the controversy about getting a PSA? Well, to some degree, the testing is both political and financial as well as medical. So from a political point of view, there's an effort made to reduce the use of the test because it costs money to do the test that diagnoses people who don't need to be diagnosed, which leads to treatments which perhaps they didn't need, which causes side effects. So there's a lot of controversy about the doing of the test. I understand that, and I know, and I know um, you understand it too, but just every test that we have, whether it's a mammogram, whether it's a CT scan of the heart, you're going to pick up disease that really may not be true disease once you further examine it, and that's the problem with the PSA, is that what you're saying? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought up other disease processes. If you or another doctor in another field had a test like PSA with all of its flaws, you would think it would be revolutionary. So it was revolutionary at one time. So what is your feeling now? Who should get a PSA? So that is uh, an interesting question. There is AUA guidance on that, the American Urologic Association, which says that first off, patients should have 10 or more years of life expectancy. Uh, number two, uh, if it's screening, which is to say you don't have any disease processes or symptoms, then the recommendation is to start screening at perhaps 50 or 55 and to stop screening at 69. That is the AUA current guidelines. That's not how I practice, however. So what do you mean, if they ha so if you have symptoms where of an enlarged prostate, you would screen or you would not screen? So it's no longer called screening. Right. If you have symptoms, we, it's now a part of the diagnostic process. And they should have a PSA? And they should have a PSA. Oh, I see. So you get a PSA and it comes back elevated, higher than normal. And normal's what up? What's the number for? Uh, that's a question that's also controversial. At one time, it was the number four. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early 2000s, it was lowered in the United States to 2.5. In Europe, it was lowered to three. Okay. 
Okay. So you come back with an elevated PSA, and what do you do next? What, this is the controversy, I guess. What do you do next? And that's kind of what we want to talk about. First off, you may want to repeat the test because there is such a thing as lab error. So if it doesn't make sense, if the test seems to be suggesting something that does not make sense, repeat the test, see if it's repetitively elevated, and then have a conversation with the patient as to whether they want to persevere with the workup. People do have a uh, a, a right to information and to be part of the decision making. Right. But currently, uh, in my practice, I next get an MRI of the prostate. That's before doing any biopsies. So what is an MRI? What is, how does that differ from a CT scan? There are a variety of techniques that are being researched to see if we can visualize cancer in the prostate. Mm -hmm. CT scan is very poor at visualizing okay. cancer in the prostate. But MRI is now being recognized worldwide as having the possibility of giving us information as to the presence or absence of prostate cancer. So the MRI is, is no radiation and it's now looking at the, able to look, see through the prostate and see if there are perhaps cancer-like cells in there, is that right? Well, not cells, but um, it can give you an answer. At the margins, meaning it's strongly positive or it's completely negative, it is of greatest value. When it's strongly positive, it's likely that there's an important cancer present, meaning a higher grade cancer. Higher grade meaning more aggressive, that uh, may, more aggressive. may kill you. Type. It, it, might, it should probably be treated if we find it and it's correct. And if it's completely negative, it does not mean you don't have cancer, but it's highly reliable as saying you don't have a high grade cancer. So low grade cancers, meaning you could, you could live 10, 15 years without taking it out, is that what you mean? As a matter of fact, uh, there is so much low grade cancer in us men mm -hmm. that we don't need to find because it isn't gonna do anything to us. We would like to have a way to know who has more risky cancer so the rest of us can be left alone. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so what, and so the, what's wrong with doing the biopsy? The biopsy, is that the biopsy needle there? Yeah, yeah this is a biopsy needle. It's used through a, um, with an ultrasound gadget and it's uh, spring loaded. So when we get ready to use this, we actually just push this button and it's a double edged uh, needle. It, there's a, a biopsy probe that goes forward and then a sheath that goes on top of it and it cuts off a piece. Okay, and so the downside to that, there must be some downside to it, right? Well, up until around 2003, uh, it was more uncomfortable because we didn't use local. We now use local, so that's not the problem, but now we have infections that can occur and the antibiotics are not working as well. So some people can get an infection. What about impotence or erectile dysfunction? There have been studies yeah. claiming that with repeated biopsy, there is some risk to impotence, but I haven't experienced it myself. So would you say now, somebody comes to you with an elevated PSA, would you be influenced by the rectal exam? In other words, the PSA is elevated and the rectal exam shows no nodules or anything, then you go to the MRI? Well, I'm glad you asked that because many doctors think that a PSA is adequate in and of itself, and they don't do digital rectals. Uh, neither the doctor nor the patient enjoys doing that. Mm -hmm. But actually, 15% of our cancers are found on the digital rectal, so it is mandatory, I think, to do that once a year. But let's say you've done that and the prostate has no lumps and the PSA is elevated. The next thing I'm doing is an MRI, albeit, I must confess, this is a change that's occurring. It's not yet standard of practice. Right. I couldn't say that every urologist must follow that guidance, but around the world, it's moving into the forefront. So we're almost out of time. So the bottom line is, I, before elevated PSA biopsy, now there's a way that you, could, you have an intermediate test, right? That's correct. That you are using and you found very useful and probably lots of doctors will before you do a biopsy and even surgery, right? Correct. So this is really revolutionary. I mean, it's a great intermediate step, I think, that will save a lot of discomfort and problems. It's reducing the number of biopsies dramatically. I'm doing way fewer biopsies since I started doing MRI. I think that's fantastic. So what is the parting message that you would give to patients who are looking at their prostate? I, and I think the most important yeah. thing we recommend to prostate patients is become master of your own destiny. Study and learn. Ask questions. As a matter of fact, I feel strongly enough about it that if you ask your doctor questions and he's reluctant to answer, consider getting a second opinion. Yeah, so there's uh, a lot of things evolving here and there's a lot of new information and your doctor should be willing to answer these and get a new guy. Definitely. Thank you.